What follows is free. But if you want to see the full extent of what we do and get involved, go to patreon.com slash word in your ear. Now, on with the show. Word in your attic, a Zoom with a view. Well, welcome to another instalment of Word in Your Attic, and it's fantastic to be joined by somebody who you all know, of uh, of course, from the beautiful South and her albums and tours since with Paul Heaton. And I've just discovered a, a, a really fantastic review of their new record. It says, The singers dissect the pitfalls of domesticity with the oh. sweet soul chemistry of Marvin Gaye and Tammy Terrell. It's the great oh, Jackie wow. Allen. Jackie, Thank isn't that you. a lovely review? It's like, it must That's be so nice movie. to read things like that. It is very nice to read things like that. It really is. It's a very, it's a lovely compliment that. Do you know what I mean? And and, and quite right. You know what I mean? It's on the it's on the head. He's got a, a, quite a a thingy way of viewing the world, hasn't he, Paul? Yeah, he has. Set to set to sweet melodies. Set to quite sweet melodies. No, it's fantastic. Well, look what we normally do in these circumstances is well people talk about the the, the music they grew up listening to and uh, have a load of old record sleeves i don't think you've got any record sleeves but are you up for telling us a bit about the stuff that you like when you were you were a kid uh yeah well i think with the with the um with the music when i first started off you know when i was when i was quite young i, I mean i come along from the same kind of avenue as paul really where when we were asked about it over the years the the notion of having families that were based, you know, like listen to a lot of music, had record players, had read the radio going all the time. We were two people from very similar kind of stances, uh, from kind of backgrounds where the stance in the house was there wasn't a lot of music played, weirdly. And you'd think that would not be the case for Paul, but it wasn't apparently. He was, he was in a house where very little music was put on, you know, to sort of influence and... I think he quickly went into like loving the Clash and and all these different kind of wonderful bands and and gigging as well, going to gigs himself. But in in the house where I grew up, there was you know there were five dusty classical music albums on the side of the shelf that my dad used to have. And this and is Mer- there, this is Merseyside, isn't it? In right? Merseyside, yeah. And it and they were there for years. And when I said dusty, I mean dusty. You know, they were like really they were the thing that <laughs> unplayed. Under, under, um, well, you know, we didn't have a record player. That's that's another thing. We did not have a record player. So literally, no record player. No, li- li- no record player. A, a big thing in in our home. We, we veered to the film side of things over music, and I think music featuring a lot in films was was that's the only time you really picked up on, you know, quite iconic soundtracks to films. You know what I mean? If you watched a film, but every Christmas and 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 if a good film came out. My parents would always say, sit down and watch this. It's a cracking film. Sit down, watch this film. It's so good. And they were all like, you know, black and white films, you know, really classic films from the 70s and the and, and, and then the 80s. You know, they did sit and say, you should watch this. Now, a lot of films did have some iconic music in. But in terms of hearing it round the home, it was never really done. And... It kind of surprised me when Paul said we were the same as a kid. Really? You know, it was it, and you would think it would be very different for Paul because of how much influence music has had over him. Yeah. Certainly, was writing. But I think so. Her, did you hear things from the radio or what? Or yeah, just see it. Yeah, you'd, yeah, or, once, I mean, yeah. Once I got to a, you know, like early teens and late, late into the te- into the nine, yeah. ten era, yeah. like eleven years old. You just have your mates, and who were like loved particular bands. I loved Duran Duran. Right. I was I thought I fell into the Duran Duran camp over the Spandau Ballet. <laughs> oh, right, <laughs> yes, a very so, so, contested war. So, which yeah. member of Duran Duran was your uh, was your favourite? John Taylor. There you oh, go. Six well, <laughs> that may have been. Yeah, uh, Dave and I very much promoted John Taylor, didn't we? When we were at Smash yeah. Hits. I can remember the first pictures of Duran Duran coming in and us looking at them on the light box and going, which yeah. one's the hunk? It, it's yeah. <laughs> Not so this guy, the bass player. We'll put him on the back page and see yeah. what happens. When we brought me, me very, very early on, the, the height, the peak of like, you know, 
my parents used to go to Blackpool every year for my dad's a pigeon racer and still oh, is. Wow. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's a pigeon racer and he still so is. So what, released them at Blackpool? And No, they were, there was a function every year. You know, oh, I very, see. Okay. You know, like a, for all the, all the bird men, as they yeah, call them. Right. The bird, the bird men. men. Brilliant. The bird men. And he, they go there every year. And one of the years when I was that young, when Heiser Duran Duran, you know, kind of mania, uh, they brought me a mirror back, you know, like a just a mirror for me wall. And it had John Taylor kind of etched into it with thing. And then the rest, what you, the rest you could see, you used to put your makeup on with it all in the early teens, you know. And my brother was so upset me one time. He'd been to, you know, uh, was he away at college? And I'd snuck in and played his record player and broke it. Oh dear. His record. He got a, he was the first one to get a record player up in his room. We didn't have one downstairs. He got one in his well, room. Well worse, you broke it probably playing Duran Duran records. Which well, is I'd gone in there add, and adding insult to injury. <laughs> <laughs> and I'd gone in and, and and broke and he just walked into my room and knocked out the John John Taylor mirror and it smashed smashed me oh, dreams oh, as well oh, as me. No, yeah. No. Bitter. He was so upset. It was a, it was, you know what I mean? It was his it, his record player was his like pride and joy. Yeah. Do you know what yeah. I mean? And my brother did have a big vinyl collection, but he was the only one who had a record player. I mean, from us being the rest of the house, my dad having like sort of five albums on the shelf and never playing. And my brother was the first one, my eldest brother, to get a record player. So it was this, it meant the world. Oh, yeah, to yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd kind of gone in there and absolutely destroyed his like sort of, <laughs> he had some cracking. He was, a, he was big, he was. Hugely into at one stage, you know, like proper heavy metal and the oh, Scorpions okay. and ACDC, and he loved all, but he loved all kinds of music. He'd be on Beatles records and everything. And but nobody else would be allowed anywhere. So me going in there, you can imagine it was just, oh my God, his world just fell apart when he came home from college. <laughs> so the, the retribution was a broken John Taylor mirror. And because and, and he, he knew how much it meant to me, he was like, ah, right, you destroyed something I love. I'm going to destroy something. Well, at least, at least it's forgi forgiven and forgotten after all it this. Is. Yes, no, it'd be awful if you were still <laughs> upset it. about it. It's, no, it's <laughs> laughed about now. It's laughed about now. It's, that's it's, really it's, funny. It's God, that time. And it, it was in a way kind of, um, it led to something even better because one of our uncle, my mum's brother, went and bought our Chris, my oldest brother, a brand new record player. So he got a brand new modern record player. We was in our late teens, going towards our, my, me, mid-teens. My brother was in his 20s then, and he was kind of at university and stuff. So it was it, one disaster led to a, something right. lovely, you know what I mean? Did you so, ever go and see Duran Duran? No, I didn't. And that's another one where we ask about music and gigs and stuff. Another thing that I didn't do, I know Paul did a lot more of it. I'm sure the lads in the band as well. I wasn't a gig-goer, really. There was, there was strangely iconic people who went to watch and it never stayed with me just how big of a deal it was, you know, to go and watch this. I watched the Cocteau Twins, who I fell in love with, again, purely from my brother. My brother was a person who handed, when he heard the music I was listening to and wasn't that keen on it, blasting out from my bedroom, he thought, I'm going to make her a compilation tape of All things right, I'm I think she might I'm going to educate my sister. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What else was on it, can you remember? Um, there was all kinds. There was Grace Jones and the Cocteau Twins and um, uh, uh, Talk Talk. There was just he just piled together these these brilliant songs. You know what I mean? REM, all kinds. And he said, "You need to listen to these tapes." And I did. And it was a directional thing. It was like from, but mainly one band, which was the Cocteau Twins. As soon as I heard Liz Fraser's voice, it was like. I'd never heard anything like it. I'd never, I, I, I didn't know for the, without meaning to sound awful, I didn't have a clue what she was singing about, but I've never heard such a beautiful and uh, just adorable voice. And it was mind blowing to me that someone, I, I, I think I sang in bits and bobs here and there with friends, just joking around, you know. But that was the first time you heard a voice and was envious of how she constructed her voice and, and the way she used it. Do you, do you know what I mean? It was this surreal and beautiful and ethereal almost and 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 controlled and, and magical, just magical voice. 
So when did you singing in a language she'd made up, but really? Hadn't yeah, you? I mean, in other words, there were almost were the, the, the odd time you could recognise a word, you know. Yeah. But the power of somebody singing like that, well, singing the way she did, is because you were solely focused on the strength of her voice and how she uses it, rather than yeah, I've not a clue what she's singing about, but it's beautiful. The music is beautiful. The sound is gorgeous. The the you, you you forget about the fact that there's 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 bits with or mostly things that you don't you're just you're kind of trying to copy it verbatim and yet you know you're making no sense yourself but it was it was aspiring you can only to me that was aspiring it was like if you could sing like anything it would be like that it's it, technically wonderful wonderful so when did you start buying records yourself? Can you remember where you the, went to buy them? Yeah, there was the first, I've mentioned this the other day when they said what 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 we were going to talk about. And I said, well, I, I vividly remember the first song I bought. It was West End Girls by the... the um, Show Boys. Show Boys. Yeah, yeah. And there was a, in St. Helens at the time, there was an old like market, you know, it was over three floors, you know, loads of little shops and everything, you know, it catered for everybody. And there was a couple of record shops in there. And I think even... The guy who run the one where I got the single from was my uncle's best friend. And he had like a massive, like right behind you now, that huge right. stack after stack after stack of record. And I got West End Girls because I thought it was just, I heard that opening kind of thingy to that at the age I was. And I was like, that is just brilliant. We were going to discos and everything. Do you know what I mean? We were going out to discos and that the sound of that was just wonderful, you know. And I had right. a bit of money, and <laughs> it tells a story too, doesn't it? It, it just, yeah, it's, it's yeah. just. I think there were songs like that when you, and songs are like that when you're a kid, anyway. There's something so a riff can be so impactful when it opens up, you know what I mean? And also, as well, it takes you straight to that a really iconic period in your life where you know you had the friends you had, the 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 age you were, the freedom you had in your mind and, and and in your life, really. Do you know what I mean? The the worry free time that you were having. I suppose that's what music does, isn't it? it yeah, it, it resonates. Did you, did you go out dancing with your, your girl mates and were you kind of yeah orga organized dancing? Was it yeah. practiced and so forth? Well, well, I did two things. We we we'd go to like a disco, you know, like on a Sunday there was a disco, but there was I used to do disco dancing as well. When oh, I was really? really young. Oh, well, competitive. And oh, really? Yeah, yeah. Oh. We to that. what? What were you dancing to? Can you remember? Oh, God, it was like... Um, <laughs> some of it was great, like Pointer Sisters songs, you know, right. Automatic yeah, yeah. and things like that. But it was proper competitive. Like, competitive I think it was quite big, disco dancing, brilliant. Yeah, and but the thing was as well, while we were there, we ended up being really bad tour away, to be honest, because, even for the age that we were. But the competitors would go there, you know, all the other people in the team and everything else and then we had a dance we had dance teachers and all this and we just ended up being absolute tearaways and <laughs> sometimes not even competing because you just do a runner all <laughs> we really? won quite a few things but it was like yeah so have you got have you got cups or anything anywhere i used to have i, I used to have the little trophies we had little plastic right, yeah. shaped, shaped yes. trophies you know cheap plastic little things with little um, <laughs> wreaths on them and everything and oh, lo and behold, this is how much we, my mum moved from where they were and left the bag there and we couldn't retrieve him. Oh, which dear. Hell which sad. was really sad, but there you go. But so I, these I were whole there. routines that you used to do. We had routines and you had to dance. Yeah, formation. You dance in pairs and you dance in a team and you do singles. It was singles, doubles, and then the team team dance competed. But it was all that old. I mean, the music especially was like that. Like I said to you, like the Pointer Sisters and uh, a lot of it was disco based as well. You know, like yeah. kind of old throwback to like sort of 80s, 70s and 80s disco as well. Uh, 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 like My Fire, you know, that kind of th them remakes of, lovely yeah, remakes yeah, of them yeah, songs, yeah. you know, but they were great, really great. So it was a mishmash really of music that I kind of got brought up to, you know what I mean? And all by exteriorly listening to and being in a place where it was being played. But like you say, in the home, it was never really, it was never pr present, you know what I mean? And radio wasn't really present, you know, which is, I don't know, it did make a difference because I think the notion of films to us was everything at the time. 
It was. It was a big emphasis on a great films coming on, sit and watch it. And there was a lot of, like I said, a lot of music in that that you just, you then was yeah. you soaked in because of, you know, The Godfather being a great film, you know, Blade Runner being a great film. All these Vangelis and, and, and these epic soundtracks became things that you remember, you know. But then my brother stepped in, obviously, as well, and was like, you've got to listen to this, listen to this. <laughs> so and the my disc- brother would have... Sorry, go on. The disco dancing was your first experience of kind of lo- uh, performing, presumably. Yeah, it was. It was. That's that's true. Actually, I never thought of it like that. But it was. It was crowds of people. You know, the families would go there, and for, you'd have all your friends there, and you would be whipping around a dance floor. At, you know, but there was also as well. There was ballroom dancing went on there as well. You know, so when strictly strictly whatever came on, I was like, it all yeah, seemed familiar. I, it yeah, never it went away, very, did it? Yeah. No, it never did. No, it never, it never it went was, away. Uh, it was quite funny to watch, actually, because I've got... But the, the film as well, is it Strictly Ballroom? Yeah, yeah. That's just so... It resonates so strongly with that. You know, everybody having numbers on the back and yeah. <laughs> competing families, you know, really quite... But the music was... was for Especially for the disco side of things, for the dance side of things that we did, was wonderful. Wonderful. I mean, not long back, I I'd, I'd downloaded some um, the Pointer Sisters again, the best of the Pointer Sisters, and it was like automatic. Was I used to go roller skating as well, you know, on a Saturday, right. and the the roller rink would play all them wonderful, you know, really brilliant sort of retro seventies yeah. proper killer songs. You know what I mean? What kind of things can you remember? <sighs> it was. There's a lot of funk music as well, yeah. you know, like um, uh, Sly and the Family Stone. You were literally yeah. flying. Also, what, what a great place to hear them, too, in a big that's oh, the, going that, rink. I mean, it's that's a, the that, point. It, that's it's fantastic. All, it, it's something about listening to music and like yeah. fairgrounds, ice rinks, things yeah. like that. Oh, it's got and a it's, feeling to it that nothing yeah. else has. And you know something? You've just said that then, and you're absolutely right, because the fairgrounds that used to come to St. Helens as well, we'd stand near the waltzes and the... And the um, all, all the different rides, but the waltzes especially. You would just be in your little cliques of friends and have these carriages whipping round and the yeah, lights yeah. at night, you know, and it was same thing. All them 80s songs, you know, like sort of, and especially like R&B and soul, you know, like Luther Van Dross and Alexander O'Neill and, and early Janet Jackson, you know, you'd have all these different, it was brilliant. Absolutely right. brilliant. I'm saying I've talked as though I had no influences whatsoever, and actually, you've just totally oh, cracked. Oh, <laughs> well, you Andorra's remember them box. so vividly. That's beautifully, beautifully described too. Yeah, yeah, Fantastic. it's weird, isn't it? But that's it. I like, like I say, I think me, me reason for saying that was because not a lot of it was interior at the home. It was all exterior experiences yeah. that kind yeah. of just soaked into my life. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean, See, yeah, you've got. You've got a few tapes there, have you? That you from, I have, from yeah. way it, back. Was, uh, yeah, well, I'm not not from. I'm having the screen here. I'm so sorry. Um, they're not from way back, but they were like. All right. I think before the 2000s, but I've made like they were only. It's just to give you an idea of like the right. reason being when I when I kind of met Paul, and I, I joined the band. That was a huge. Um, kind of gate opening to other artists like Nancy Griffith and Iris Dement and uh, there was all kinds. They used to come on and make compilation tapes on the tour bus. You know, they would come onto the tour bus and make these brilliant compilation tapes and everybody had one. And they'd vie for spots, you know, to play them while we were on oh, tour. Oh, really? Yeah, because everybody thought the compilation tape it was, was better. better. Everybody... <laughs> <laughs> That's great. So you'd have these like little... You know, like, oh, oh, please, I'll just, it won't, man's not got that many songs on it, you know, yeah. kind of put it on. Yeah. So they were playing it, you know, but the, this one's like a, it, there's all kinds, James Taylor, Frank Sinatra, Winona, Ray Charles, yeah. Johnny Cash, The Rubettes, Dusty Springfield, Ben Foles, um, Burt Bacharach, Ella Fitzgerald, Talking Heads, uh, The Four Tops, um, Eddie Reader. There's all kinds on it. And it, it's things like that were, I think, from them, making them kind of tapes. I think I was inspired then to come home and just start compiling all my different favourite artists at the time, you know what I mean? Right. And it was learning a lot about what, I think as well, the, the massive influence that, that songs had had on Paul, you know what I mean? And all of them really, but more, but a lot of, with Paul and, and Dave, rather, and 
Dave Rothery at the time because you could hear that kind of the bands that they like, the artists they like, just how much they loved music and how much the styles of music really influenced what they were doing and they just loved it. Um, I think a love of music was really, really there, you know. And you got into the group. The story was that you, you met Paul, I think, after a gig or something and you were invited to a party and you heard you singing at the party. Yeah. I mean, is yeah. that a true, that's the true story? It's a true yeah. story. Well, the, the, the weird thing was, you know, I said to you about the, the festival they used to have each year in St. Helens, which was yeah. for only for three days. The Beautiful South were booked in to play there in 91. And weirdly, his friend, Paul had come over the day before to meet up with a friend that he had in St. Helens. And happenstance, I was across the road from the club that he'd been in the night before. In the early hours of the morning, and my friend, a best friend who was sat with me on a curb, just looked across and said, my God, that's the guy. That's the guy from the house, Martins, at the back of a dive club at the back of town. And we kind of looked across and I just, me not having a clue. I knew of, of the band, obviously. And I certainly knew of the House Martins because she was a huge fan, a huge fan of the House Martins. She had the cassette, you know, like, um, now that's what I call quite good. And she'd put it on all the time. So I knew who she was speaking of. And this little group of, group of people across the road kind of waved us over. We, they said, we're going to a house. Do you want to come, have a drink? We went, went back with them. And thankfully... My friend who was with me who also had a fantastic voice prodded me to sing in front of him because he was talking about music. And it was only for a few seconds and I did. And he just looked at me and he said, if we ever do anything further down the line, would you think about... And I just thought, this guy is absolutely plastered. There's no way he's going to prepare me. <laughs> and I don't know whether I sang... I think I might have sang a Carpenter's song because I loved the Carpenters at the time or it was a, 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 a Mamas and Papas song. But just a few lines, you know. And he, his ears kind of pricked up and he just looked, he said, you, your voice is really lovely. And if you thought about doing anything, would you? And I went, yeah, sure, all right. <laughs> Never another word said about it. Flash forward a year and a half. Life went on, went home. I'd got a job since then, was working in a little supermarket. And his friend from St. Helens came and found me in the shop and said, do you remember that night you sang in front of Paul? And I was like, yeah. And he said, well, they want you to go and audition for him. I was like, what? How on earth did you find One, how does he remember me? Second, how on earth did you find <laughs> It was just, That's it was astonishing. a series of, of bizarre and, and fortunate events that just led into me to be where I was, him to be where he was, and... The rest, as they say, is history. It's, it's a movie. That's a movie. It really it's, is. Uh, sorry, <laughs> it's the key. D- the key detail detail is the supermarket because we we're all vi- envisaging the supermarket. I yeah. know. This that was. I was. I can give you the exact because I've got you know you have them want uh, like a clear like sort of picture in your mind yeah, of yeah. exactly what you were doing in that moment when somebody said that to you, and it's the contrast between what you were doing and where you ended up. I was down on my knees with a bag of spuds, throwing spuds onto a shelf. Seriously. And I, I remember it vividly because I was like kind of looked up at this guy who, who was friends with Paul, you know, and he, he came in and I, and I just, so this conversation was taking place as I was throwing Maris Pipers on a shelf, you know what I mean? And I was like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> and, and I honestly got, I walked in the back, the back of the shop to our floor manager and jokingly said, and he was like, have you finished, you know, real taskmaster, whatever, and he was, you know, everybody needs to do. And I went, I said, hey, I won't be doing this for long. I'm going sing- singing with the British pop group. Jokingly, jokingly, honestly. Yeah, so long, suckers, I'm out of here. Oh, and yeah. I swear to God, I went in the back <laughs> and there was, a, there was a House Martin song on, on the radio. And I just went, I'm going singing with these. And he went, get back to work. And I just went, oh my God. That's a and fantastic they, story. Honestly, God, the way you, you couldn't, you know what I mean? You you think of stories and you just go, that is just crazy. Crazy. I, so how long, how long ago is that then? That was when I was, that was in 91. Right. I think I, did, I kind of, I joined officially in like, nine, I joined officially in 94. I started playing, like going down singing with them as a kind of session like doing the okay. first album where there was a session singer kind of in October '93, so I would have just turned twenty in in December in November of '93. 
So I started when I was 20, really. Incredible. So and 48 Can now. you remember any of the bills that you were on in the early days? Uh, well, the, 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 the very first things, you know, the, the kind of earliest stuff that we, we did, um, the very first thing that we did, you know, and everything was new to me. You know, this band had been going for a while, certainly Paul had with the House, the House Martins and the Beautiful South. I was kind of dropped into things where they were saying the first ever gig was going to be in Middlesbrough. And they were like, it's fine. It's only 650 people. Well, that to me was like playing Wembley Stadium. I was like, it's a lot what? of people. It's a huge well, no, amount. to me, it was, I'd never done anything. I'd never performed in front of anyone in my life like that. And I certainly never sang a full gig. And uh, it was just all totally new. So to them, it was just like a little drop in the ocean. You know, it was this thing of, it's fine. It's only 650. I was like, are you kidding? I'm terrified. Absolutely terrified. And we did it. And it was like kind of a pre little warm up gig before we started the tour, which the next night was in Liverpool at the Royal Court. And I had all family there. So it just kept getting worse. It was like the first one was frightening enough. But then to have all my family saying, we're going to be there. And I was like, oh, my God. That doesn't help, does it? No, no. No. (laughs) Oh, my God. I I I must must have been shaking from head to toe. But the really, one of the lovely things I remember about that very first gig in the Middlesbrough on, you know, my, my parents drove across. And I was nervous, obviously, terribly nervous. But I... My parents who were kind of at the side, this little door at the side of the stage. I'd lost my dad, you know, I couldn't see him. And I, th- and I kind of went to my mum and I said, where's my dad gone? And she went, he's in the toilet throwing up. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> oh, bless him. She said, he's so frightened for you. He's actually, and it's not oh, like no. my dad. It's That's not so... like my dad to feel nervous oh, at no. all, ever. And she said, he's gone in the bathroom being sick. Oh, and I, that's quite touching. But nervous, <laughs> know, and nervous on your behalf. That's a yeah, different oh, thing. He's terrified. He's terrified. That, is, that, is, that is, I can imagine it. Yeah. Really. He said imagine. he's disappeared into the bathroom and he's being sick. I was like, oh, but, but actually it made me worse. I was like, oh, God, if he's frightened, oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I should, what, what should I be doing? <laughs> it's, it's not as if he'd watched you doing it, like no, singing live on stage since you were 12 or whatever. He would have got used to it. No, you were straight well, in the deep end. He, he, must have thought, he must have thought, this won't work. Not to 60. <laughs> I was terrified. It was just, I mean, and I think the next night, the following night, the official one, for were all the family with, actually, the rest of the family with her. My mum regaled the story back to me. She said, one of your aunties, my auntie Marion, was driving her back from the village. She had to stop the car because my mum threw up. It was like, oh, my God, we're a family of, 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 of complete nervous wrecks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So oh, it was, it was so, but it was. Did you feel terrible for putting them all through all this? I don't, <laughs> yeah. I don't know. It's going to be nerve wracking. Yeah, but again, yeah, yeah. it was one of them where it was a case of going from no experience whatsoever to the absolute unknown. And I think definitely for my family as well was just. What the hell? How yeah, absolutely. Do you, how do you cope with this? You know what I mean? But yeah, all the lads have been doing it for so long. And but it, in that you got this thing of and to this day, it's lovely having family there because they all love it. And and they all just the the atmosphere, they've always loved coming and just the crowds and everything. My dad just loves it because he gets free pints off everybody. Or he right. did he got we went through a spell where if we were in a venue and across the road, I, was, I think it was all about this today. It, the very the one of the gigs we did in Bridlington on the very first tour with the Beautiful South, some of the lads in the pub clocked who he was. Well, kind of clocked me, but then then they went, they kind of turned. Away. Who are you, pal? You know, my dad was like, I'm the father. He must have had about 19 pints lined up for him, you know, right. from punters who were buying him. Drunk. Yeah, but cool. it, it it's it's one of them where you know we talk about music kind of as you grew up. I mean, for me, dad, he's always loved music. And I think he missed having like that kind of thing, you know, albums everywhere and a radio being on and because they listen to music now and they just adore it. Right. You know, my mum loves all the old, like, you know, Ella Fitzgerald and, and, and old jazz music. And I love jazz music now as well. You know, it's, it's, I think it's something that if you've, if it's, if it's not been there in your life and actually you secretly, it moved you and you wanted it to be, you know, presence in your day, even if it's all but once or twice, you know. Once they start hearing it, it's a wonderful thing, isn't it? You know what I mean? It's like, mm. I love listening to albums now. I think it's great. I put music on even my mum because I absolutely know 
What's monster. the greatest record ever made? Greatest album ever made? To put oh, you on no. the spot. <laughs> um, An absolute favourite that's never let you down. For me, me. For the, 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 yeah, for you. Uh, I think I, I feel awful saying this because it, it's it's almost like a cop out, isn't it? Where you say uh, there's been there's been certain ones that I can still listen to something now that's that that is new and is is wonderful, and I'll I'll just hammer the thing for like over and over again because I love it. I love anything by Mogwai. Now that's an mm. honest choice. Mogwai, I've always adored. Talking Heads, I've always adored. The Cocktail Twins, I would say, I, I would actually say Bluebell Knoll for me by the Cocktail Twins has been my favourite. Bluebell Knoll. Because it, it was, it, my brother actually gave me Treasure by, by the Cocktail Twins as a first album on cassette. And then I, I listened to Bluebell Knoll after it. And I, I, I can tell you now, like, like so I've stood in my me, me bedroom window. One thing I, did, I didn't have a record player, but I had a little cassette player that was terrible. It was this little plastic thing that sat on the end of me, <laughs> on the end of me, me uh, set of drawers in the room, you know. And the vision of out my window overlooking towards Wigan, over St. Helens and the hills towards like where Wigan was beyond that, which I thought was the end of the world. I thought you couldn't go any further. <laughs> it's like it stopped. <laughs> But that, listening to that at night time with the, the lights of like St. Helens all coming through my window and over to Wigan was just, it was everything, you know what I mean? It was like the best album I'd ever heard, you know? Because it was a woman who could, a woman who I looked up to who could sing. Yeah. And it was me teenage years, you know what I mean? It was me, it was a, it was just a window into somewhere where it, it, it was lovely. It was like an escape, you know? And certainly an escape listening to somebody you admired and a voice that you kind of revered and and and, and thought if you could sing like that it would be incredible. Just incredible. Mm. And loved and uh, and and lauded over, you know what I mean? Thought, oh, my God. And I think that's where if I practice, not practice for any reason, not practice for the job in mind, just end there in a good way, in a nice way. You know what I mean? Envying somebody's talent and thinking that's 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 the that's the standard you need to set yourself to if you're gonna sing, you know. Let's talk a little bit about this. This ah, is your, this is your new record. It is. Yours and Paul's. Tell yes. us about this. Well, it's the fifth one, I can't believe it. And we weirdly, and it's a wonderful thing as well, because the previous album that we'd done, not to jump back a bit, but the previous one was right smack bang before lockdown kicked in. And it it's kind of faded the memory a little bit of it now, but only because of what happened. It was so strange and surreal for everybody. But this now coming out of it is it can be enjoyed more because everybody's freed up a little bit and we're all getting back to normal again. So it's felt even nicer doing another one. Do you know what I mean? Because we know that things are, are, are moving along a bit better. And, and there's and, a track on it, in fact, isn't there, about uh, I ain't going nowhere, all about not being able to travel because of yeah, lockdown. Yeah, so it's, a, it's, it's great hearing those, like, you know, when we've gone into rehearse everything and you get these real nods to what, what's going on at the time, you know. And it was a brilliant thing to actually sing as well, you know what I mean? Because I, I think we all have a little, well, me and Paul, obviously, we have a pop at each song, you know what I mean? Or some things are clearly defined, you know, you'll say, this is you singing this, this is me singing that. So hearing them things back and going, you know, my family and friends, da, 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 da. It's, all, it's all like, I ain't going nowhere this year. And it's, it's so like, yeah, everybody was just like... <laughs> We're all, we're all, we're all here. We're all stuck. We're all just doing the same thing, and and it was, it was so hard for everybody. I know it was a strange and surreal time, and so I'd like to say it, the the previous album had not not quite nowhere near that sentiment of we're all stuck. It's so difficult, but this one now has got the throwback to it, which is even stranger. But in a way, that's what makes it all the a happier thing to know that we've come through that we've come out of it and it's it, it, yeah it's a good thing to listen to but there's there's the old song in there like still which is a really touching song that Paul went into about um the birth of a child you know and it and it and the 
So th there's some poignant stuff on there as well, and, and it meant a lot to Paul to sort of have that written. And it it's it's just it's nice to know that this one can be immediately kind of promoted and put into the public you know, in the public eye, really, and we can go and talk about it and we can meet up with people like yourselves and and just be a bit more open about it rather than just absolute the world just turning on its head, you know what I mean, which it did, you know what I mean? It was so, it was such a sad time, you know, so. Well, it's fantastic. And, you, and you're touring this, aren't you, in November? Is that right? When you, when you, when yes. you start the tour? Um, it, the, the tour starts at the end of November, going into December. And uh, there's numerous places we're going to, we're up to Scotland, down to Portsmouth, I believe, London, um, Wales, North and South, um, Sheffield, Birmingham. There's numerous places, but it's it's nice. It's, it's always brilliant to go out touring. It's wonderful, wonderful. And it's lovely to see the response and it's, it's lovely to have people come out. We have the nicest people coming to watch us. They're really supportive and really nice, you know. So it's great. It's great being out on tour. Okay, oh, well, fantastic. Look forward to it. I mean, lovely talking to you. Oh. Word in your attic. A Zoom with a view.